happened. It was uh, it was uh, a top rank uh, show. Uh, Brad Goodman called me uh, and asked me if if he uh, if Franco would be available to fight uh, uh, Andrew Maloney for the WBA title. And uh, at that time, Franco was still signed with uh, Golden Boy Promotions. So. So before we even brought up to Golden Boy, I agreed to the fight. You know, Brad Goodman is a good friend of mine, and, and he told me, look, we have this opportunity. Obviously, I know that. I know for a fact, even Top Rank didn't think Franco could beat Maloney. So they called me thinking, okay, we're gonna get a title defense out of the way. But uh, I, I know what Franco's about. I know Franco's uh, is a tremendous fighter. Maybe they didn't believe much in, in him before, but uh, we took the fight, then, Top Frank got a hold of Golden Boy, told him they negotiated the first, you know, all that, all the business side of it. But I had already agreed to the fight, and uh, I knew going into the fight that uh, that Franco would become champion. Yo, I think I think it was the beginning of 2020 when the pandemic had started. Uh, I was training in the gym, but I really had nothing going on for me. Um, so I was just chilling, uh, staying in the gym, staying busy. And Robert gave me a call saying. Um, that they offered me to fight for a world title and he already had told them yes but he wanted to see what, what I said and I was like fuck yeah like let's go for it like this is a one in, once in a lifetime opportunity no but not not everybody gets the chance to fight for a world title so I was very excited and um I was I was in, in camp ready the, the the following weekend that he had called me so I was here right away and uh, we, we got to training and um I remember that was my first my first world title shot I fought against Andrew Maloney he was the a side he was the one with the promoter you know he was the one I was supposed to you know beat me and you know he was supposed to um have his break his breakout in america you know so um we trained hard we trained we trained our asses off robert pushed me to the limit he kept me focused and um we upset the champion and we we won the belt and um so it's been um it's been a journey ever since of Andrew Maloney, declaring the winner by unanimous decision, and new WBA Super Flyweight Champion of the World, Joshua and Professor Franco! It went the distance, it went 12 rounds, but I, I dominated um, the whole fight. There was times in the fight where I heard him, and you know, I thought I was, I was able to take him out and shit, but... Um, he was he was a, he's a world champion. He had he had the tricks and he you know he had his his little style. So I wasn't able to get out, get him out of there. But I dominated him. I dropped him in, in the eleventh round, and I think that the the dropage is what sealed the, the the decision for me because it was it was a split decision and um I ended up getting the decision against the world champion. You know I think the odds started like eleven to one. Then at the end uh, it was still six to one, which. They didn't give us a chance. They didn't give Franco a chance to, to become champion. He went out there and, uh, and became champion of the world. You know, then we had to do uh, we had to do the rematch. We had a rematch class. And then the rematch uh, happened, and it was controversial because of uh, the uh, the headbutt that uh, that uh, shut his his, uh, his eye up. Yeah, we, we had a rematch. Uh, and the rematch, the second fight ended in a no contest because um, he headbutted me in the second, uh, in the first round, and my eyes started swelling up. And uh, you know, Robert told me that you know um, that it was a headbutt and that we're gonna have, we're gonna have to you know go to the scorecards because you know we were on in, you know in the territory in the en enemy's territory, so you know we were trying to um, do the best we could to, to keep the title and um, protect you know protect me and. You know, uh, the, the referee um, checked my eye and he asked if I could see, and I couldn't see shit. All, all I could see was just black out, out of my right eye. So, um, you know, right when I told him that I couldn't see, he stopped the fight and he caught it off and it went to a no contest. And that caused up a whole fucking lot of drama. You know, uh, they were, like the top rank was pissed. Um, everybody was pissed, you know. Of course, they were pissed because they, they wanted the decision to go their way. But, you know, thank God um, everything worked out in, in our favor and we, we left home with the title. Stop! Time! Over there. And Russell Over Moore here. is going to call time. I'm looking at the eye from the accidental headbutt. He's concerned with the right eye already. It is closing. So a little early drama time. with the champ. Stay smart. Block, but you got to come back. Yeah. That's pretty bad, right? I don't think you can see anymore. 
I think you could see. Russell Mora is going to call time prior to the start of round three so that the ringside physician can examine that right eye of the champion, Joshua Franco. Come back. They Due to the accidental headbutt, we're starting the third round. Four rounds have not been complete. So, and we had an, another rematch, the third fight. In the third fight, I dominated, you know, every round. I, 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 beat, him, I beat him unanimous decision, and I had to seal the deal on that one. <laughs> And there's a lot of good stuff going on inside this ring right now. Which often is the case when you marry up the styles and you get to a third fight. Just look at the timing of Franco. Just the creativity of the offense of Franco. It's impressive me tonight. Changing levels going downstairs. Leading with the left hook. Shooting a jab out there. Coming over the top of the right hand. He's doing a lot of great things inside this ring. You knew both guys were going to bring it. Franco's brought just a touch more. Franco told us he got in the best work. He worked great in camp. He's a fuller version of himself. That's what we're seeing. And I thought this was a good, steady performance for San Antonio's Joshua Franco. Oh, yeah, yeah. How are you doing? It depends, you know, it depends on the day. Um, the first, on, on Monday, he didn't spar, so we just did mids. Yesterday, we did mids. So, since we already did mids for two, two days of the week, um, after sparring today, we did heavy bag. And then maybe on Friday after sparring, we might do some mid work. You know, it just depends on the day and right. how he's feeling. You know, that's something we gotta oh. keep a close eye on, see how he's doing, how he's feeling, he's having a good day. And those are days that we put to, to, to work. work <laughs> Nah. I'm about to do some back drills. I'm about to keep on putting them on the back and shit. <laughs> you know, I just keep building that stamina and keep going. We're on the right track. You gotta do now again. Easy. Nah, I'm gonna stretch. Easy. 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 That time Franco was already a free agent, so we're like, man, you know, that there's not a better op opportunity for a fighter as a free agent to go and fight uh, in Japan for the for, to unify world titles. So we go up there, you know, great shape, best shape of his life, and uh, goes out there and fights, does his job, and then we get a, we get a we get a draw, with you know, for me, you know, I know it sucks, you know that. Everybody, we all thought we won, so Josh would have been the first ever uh, unified champion on San Antonio, Texas. Well, that fight, um, after I had got out my contract with Golden Boy, um, they had released me because they weren't doing anything for me. So, you know, once that happened, I started getting offers from, from different promoters, and Robert, he called me for this offer. They offered me, they offered um, to fight against Ioka in Japan for, the, for our, both our titles, WBA and WBO. So we fought for our titles. Um, I got the offer. We trained our asses off. I was here for 12 weeks. We went to Japan. Uh, we, we fought our asses off. It was it was a badass fight, and a lot of people thought I thought um, that we had put it off. But you know, we were in Japan. The 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 fight was. I felt like I won, but it was kind of close to where like it was kind of like eh, like I don't know, like it was kind of iffy, you know. So um, I thought I did enough to win. My team, you know, they um, they told me that I I won the fight. I put it off, and you know. 
come to the decision, it just it ended up in a draw, and you know, now we're running it back, and um, we'll see what happens this fight. <laughs> We didn't get the the the, unif yeah, the win, but we still came back as a champion. You know, he still kept his belt. So for me, I know that going into somebody else's hometown, a different country, uh, they could it could have been worse. It could have been worse. They could they could have taken the fight from us, gave Yoka the win, and would have came back with no with no belt. So you know, it sucks that we didn't come back with two belts. And, 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 and as the first ever San Antonio Texas fighter to, to unify a, a world title, it sucks. But we still came back with the belt. Now we're going back with the rematch, you know, and uh, and uh, we're gonna, I think we're gonna be better than the first fight. So we're gonna go out there and put a statement, you know. After the first fight, even the Japanese media told us after the fight, we had a press conference, and they all told us we all think that Franco won, but. That's what boxing is, you know. I understand. We went to his hometown. It's uh, part of boxing. It happens. This is the first or last time that that a bad decision, you know, happens. So I, I was okay with it. I, I didn't have a problem. But well, you know what? Uh, the first fight, going to a, a different country, somewhere where you have never been before. I'm sure there was that question in, in, in Franco's mind. Uh, Franco also had him fight in a, almost a year and a half, so he, he had a little bit of ring rust. So he went in there, still performed, and to all of us in most of the boxing world, we all thought Franco won, which you know means that his next fight, six months later, they already went through that ring rust, they already went through that fighting in another country, he's going back to the same country. Same place, same town, same hotel, everything's gonna be the same, uh, same opponent. I think Frank is gonna perform much better this year.